It is now my honor to present to you your commencement speaker, a great friend of the University of New Orleans, Mr. Dennis Lasher. Thank you very much, and I promise you the speech will not be as long as that introduction, Dr. Foss. Well, I know that makes y'all happy. Let me first start off and say I am sincerely thankful to the graduates, to Dr. Foss, and the entire university community for giving me the honor to address you today. Um, it truly is an honor, a privilege for me, and uh, this is my first graduation address, and I have to tell you, I don't think I'd rather do it at any other school uh, in the country. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. And that reason is, is because I also attended the University of New Orleans. And, and although I did not graduate from here, I did postgraduate work here. And I shared the same classrooms that you shared, Lakefront Campus, Causeway Campus. Um, and I, my first job offer came as a result of, of the University of New Orleans um, Placement Center. And I always look back on this campus and I always am thankful for what it delivered for me. I, like many of you, uh, worked two jobs to get through the University of New Orleans and my other education. It was a tough haul, but I'll tell you what, I am so appreciative for what it has given me today. I mentioned my jobs with the Saints and Pelicans and, and the question I often get with two football, t two, two sports teams and and games on the weekends and games during the week, everyone says, well, how can you, how can you keep up? And the truth of the matter is, it's, it is a seven day a week job and it's seven days start in July and really it hasn't stopped yet. I'm sure we'll get off here. We have mini camp I need to get back for this afternoon, but so I'll make this quick. But, um, but it was nothing, it was nothing I tell you compared to the hard work it took me to fin finally get the accounting classes that I need to sit for the CPA. And I can promise you all the hard work that you've paid, to, paid uh, it will pay off for you as well. You know, I've been in, I've been in this league in, in, in sports for nearly 20 years, and, and uh, I'm sure when people may have noticed that, uh, that I was speaking today, they would think that I would give some speech about individual achievement or teamwork or something to do with sports. And we'll touch on sports, but I think there's something, another, another, another area I'd like to go in, and that is, and that is selling tickets. <laughs> That's for you business majors out there. We have a lot to learn. Um, why do people buy tickets? Why do people come to our games? We debate this in our industry over and over and over again, and I can tell you, we sometimes know the answer, but we don't like the answer. Instead, what we try to do is say, it's got to be about the game. It's got to be about the concessions. It's got to be about the entertainment. It's got to be about the customer service. It's got to be about the technology, right? And I will tell you, we have polled and polled and polled and polled our customers year after year after year, and they tell us the same thing. It's not about those things. It's about the price. It's about whether or not they think the team's heading in the right direction. And it's also about the fans have to like your owner, your players, and your coaches. Those three simple things, it's not technology, it's not the food. Now don't get me wrong, all of those things are very, very important and we never want to overlook those things. But when the people speak, they say those are the three things that are most important to them. And if you boil that down, we're talking about what are we talking about? We're talking about good value, a good product, and being a good corporate citizen. Sounds pretty familiar, right? That's the hallmark of just about every good company in America. But what does that mean to us? What does that mean to graduates? What does that really mean? And may I humbly suggest to you that those three items mean so much more than just selling tickets, just packing the stands, just keeping a full arena, May I suggest to you that we should think about these things in our life and our career. Because when we talk about being right price, we're talking about value. We're talking about uh, your value, the value that you'll bring to an organization, a team, a family, or a community. You must always understand your value. You must always understand your use usefulness. And don't think for a moment that you can't make a difference. There are countless examples of the meek making a difference in our community, in our nation, in our world. To understand your value, you must always trust yourself. Never undervalue your abilities, but always remain humble in your gifts. You should always take pride in your work, 
but always remain respectful. Headed in the right direction. Let's all have a vision for yourself. Let's all have a vision on what we can try to accomplish. We should set goals and strive to achieve them. You've done that. You've displayed that today. Have a plan. Have a thirst for knowledge. Seek to continually improve. As you sit here today, you are some of the smartest and most educated people on this planet. Only 7% of the global population have a college education. It's hard to believe. Only 7% smartest and most well-educated on this planet. Now, it's unfair because I see some of the parents agreeing with well-educated, but they're rolling their eyes on smartest. But, um, but anyway, let's be fair here. Um, also know that from every day forward, from this period on, if you don't expand your knowledge, you're falling behind. You must never be satisfied with this, this, this degree. You must continue to pursue education and information. And, and with more education and more information, You'll expand your vision and your dreams. And having information, having vision, are so attractive to so many people. People seek leaders with vision and knowledge. Lastly, be a good corporate citizen. Give back, get involved, take pride in your community, in your school. Everyone has special talents. You could have not have graduated from this great university if you didn't have special talents. I promise you that the reward that you will receive from giving back far outweighs whatever cost or time you put in. Don't ever run from problems. Work to make it better. Unfortunately, many decades ago, everyone ran out and fled the cities, went to the suburbs where they thought they were getting away from the problems. And guess what? The problems followed them there. And if you didn't face those problems, then they're catching up. If you don't face those problems, they'll catch up with your children or the next generation. It's time to stand up and face our problems. As I said earlier, you are useful and have great value, make a difference. So how does the local kid who attends UNO and Loyola make it to be president of the Saints and Pelicans, the home team? It's real easy, right? Just learn how to sell tickets. Uh, as we celebrate the graduates, we also celebrate education, this great university and this community. Let's never impact, and let's never forget the impact of education on our community, world, and planet. From scientific discovery to literary expression, education is the pillar of prosperity, equality, justice, and freedom. And let us never forget this university. I implore the graduates today to continue to support this university. I am convinced that the wages of a strong alumni base will be a greater community and greater regional support. Over the last decade, as you may have heard in my introduction, I've, been in, I've had the opportunity to be involved in a lot of acquisitions. And when we look at acquisitions, we look at great assets. And I'm telling everyone here today, this school has great assets. But we can't expect this university to be great if we don't make it great ourselves. No one's going to make it great for us. We all have to give back to what is given to us. We talk about this post-Katrina renaissance. We can't have a renaissance in this city if we don't have an enlightened populace. And this university is part of that enlightenment. Again, this community needs, more, needs you more than ever before, and again, it's up to us. Lastly, promise I'm off in two seconds. Someone helped you get here today. I don't know if it was a parent, a grandparent, a brother, a sister, a, a child, whatever it is, whoever it is, just make sure you take the time today or this weekend and give them a hug and say thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I offer my sincere wishes of Godspeed to you on your incredible journeys. Thank you very much.